And then I think the last pillar of every successful corporate social responsibility program is to orient the company to solve social problems. Orient the company to solve social problems. Now we do this in the GE Foundation that Bob Corcoran runs. And there the focus is on education. Primarily uh, secondary education, inner city schools, to teach more children in the United States and around the world to, to be comfortable with math and science for the purpose of going on to become engineers or making a technical contribution. And we give hundreds of millions of dollars. We do big programs, big grants, $25 million, 20 to $25 million grants in six cities where we're really going in, working with the teachers unions, working with the principals, working with the people that we do. And we think in our way, we can stand up and say, GE is helping to solve one of the big social issues of our time. And, and we're doing this by teaching inner city kids to study math and science so that they can be productive. And we feel great about that. We feel good about what we're doing and we feel like that's a positive contribution. But the other thing we do is we orient our technology towards solving, and I would say lots of it, you know, maybe $4 billion out of the $6 billion we spend, is fundamentally oriented towards two what I would consider long-term social problems. One is clean energy, clean water, clean energy on a global basis. And the other one is access to affordable health care. And we have aligned the profit goals of the company and the long-term technology of the company to go after those two long-term social problems. Now, you know, we launched this initiative called uh, uh, Ecoimagination in 2004, really publicly in 2005. You know, it was kind of a focus on green is green. And we made uh, four commitments at that time. I think one of the things we thought about the initiative was that we didn't want it to be soft. You know, in, in other words, I think one of the things that I always think about, you know, we really don't do anything in our company without metrics, even CSR. So we are very kind of metrically driven and that's the way we looked about uh, eco-imagination. So we said we're gonna double our R&D. We were gonna extensively grow our revenue as we, uh, as we looked at eco-imagination, that we were gonna reduce our own carbon footprint inside the company, get on the Kyoto Protocol standard, is how we ran the company, and that we were gonna be transparent and work with, on public policy in that context. And today, you know, four years later, we've kind of more than doubled our R&D. We've got $17 billion in revenue, up from five billion when we started. We've reduced our own carbon footprint by 12%. It's actually been a money saver and we've been very active in the debate on global warming. So again, what we've done is used our technology to solve a big social problem and help both GE investors and, and, uh, and, and, and really address this, this crisis at the same time. Similarly in healthcare, we work on technologies like digital mammography with information technology, which can provide access, competitive access, broadly speaking on a global basis, and over time ought to be able to improve prevention, spot disease earlier, lower overall healthcare costs, and drive uh, access up on a global basis. So our corporate social responsibility program is mainstream to the core of the company. It's about competitiveness. It's about running the company with trust. It's about having great people and it's about using our technology to solve some of the world's biggest issues, earning money for our investors and helping solve problems at the same time. So that's my third point. First point, reset. Second point, work on competitiveness. First point, third point, go back and really work with your CEO or work with your business teams to make sure that it's not, here's my strategy and here's what we do on CSR but make CSR core to the strategy of your company. That's, I think, the only way you can be successful. Uh, the fourth point I'd make is engagement. I think one of the things that I've learned over my career is the importance of uh, engagement with sometimes people that make you uncomfortable. And it's probably the only thing you can do in a reset world is learn how to engage. And maybe the example, you know, I would give is some of the activities that we did uh, with the U.S. Climate Action Partnership as part of our uh, uh, Eco-Imagination Initiative. 
I started my career in 1982. I basically started my career in our plastics business. So I've been involved in environmentally sensitive industries over my career. And, and I would say, uh, you know, really a healthy dislike for most environmental NGOs, really, in the first, let's say, 20 years of my career. You know, guys like me were trained to say, there's nothing good that can ever come from embracing an NGO, nothing. <laughs> and that was, you know, that, that's what most business people my age, you know, that's what shaped the first time period of our career. And one of the things that, when we started Eco-Imagination, we basically created three teams inside the company about a year before we launched. And one team went out and studied the science. You know, one, one team went out and studied, you know, kind of what is it, let's study every scientific report. One team went out and talked to our customers. And one team went out and studied public policy, NGOs, you know, what the commentary was. And I, I was pretty much a, a blank slate. You know, I, I always tell people, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm kind of all, I'm an all-in businessman. It's my, it's my hobby, it's my, it's my love, it's my life. I love GE, it's where I spend my time, it's where most of my friends are. I'm a pretty one-dimensional person. So we didn't do eco-imagination because I had some big, like, in, you know, a green dream one night, you know, or something like that. In fact, I tell people, I, I've never camped. You know, I've never, I've never camped, I don't, I don't fish, I don't do any of that stuff, right? To me, I'm an all-in, I'm an all-in business guy, you know? So I, I just listened to the groups when they came back. I listened to the group talk about the science. And I'd say most, you know, look, most people, when you just sit and think about the science, it's pretty irrefutable, I gotta tell you guys. I mean, you can study the stuff you want. I, I was pretty much a blank slate. I just listened to people. And so that was the science. A group from the customers came in. The customers said, hey, don't do anything, okay? You know, don't, don't make our lives miserable. Well, I listened to some, didn't listen to other stuff like that. And then the, the public policy group came in and said, you know, Jeff, you really should go get to know who some of these people are. You know, they're, they're coming towards the middle. And I think, again, as I've gotten to know some of the real leaders I respect in the environmental NGO movement, I think they, like me, you know, we've had kind of parallel paths. Their path had been being an unloved environmental NGO for 20 years, having seen almost nothing happen on their dream, finally saying, look, if we really want to make change, we got to embrace something. And I came at it from the side of a business person who basically said, hey, stiff arm, stiff arm, stiff arm. But maybe, you know, we've got the worst of all worlds today. We, we have undeclared regulation in environment. You know, in other words, the last 49 coal plants haven't gotten permits. Guess what? When that happens, it means you do have an energy policy. You just don't know it, right? So I, I viewed it as the worst of all worlds, so why not? So, you know, in, in a very strange way, we came together not out of you know, loving each other completely, but out of a very pragmatic mission. And 40 companies have now joined the US Climate Action Partnership, eight NGOs, and uh, are working constructively to give the next administration a tapestry to say, look, if this is what you'd like to do on, uh, on global warming, we think we can bring industry to this level. And, and we think the NGOs can come to this level, and maybe there's the basis on which things would go. Now, I think CEOs can't do that all the time, but on a few topics, it's important that we engage, that we have comments, that we work together, and so engagement, I think, is important for brand building and for things like that. So, five points. Reset, business role to make people confident, corporate social responsibility core strategy, engage, even sometimes with people you don't understand or you don't think understands you, but at least the discussion is important. 